Okay, people, let's do our homework for a Thursday. I want you to pause the video, get your answer, write it on a piece of paper. So for number 47, go ahead, pause, read the question, and get your answer. So this is basically saying that the uh, cost of the trailer is 20 bucks plus $25 each day, right? So we want to find the cost of the rental for days. So all the choices give us C, right? So C equals what? What? tells us the overall cost. Well, D equals day. So we know it's gotta be $20 for each day. The D would be how many days, right? So we put that like that because we know we're gonna multiply that, right? And then we're going to have to add in the additional cost, of the basic fee of $20, right? So we know that that is what the cost is going to equal. So it all comes back to how many days to decide the cost. So which one of those does that match? Oh, I did it backwards. I was supposed to write 25 here. It's $25 each day. It's $25 each day plus the $20 flat fee. So your answer for that one would be B. Now, when you look at some of these choices, just know that this one, they did what I did, right? They put the numbers backwards. Just remember, 25 is the one that you get charged per day. The 20 is the flat fee. So you've got to see this plus 20 in the choice. Right when you see it's $20 a day, you know they're adding on 20 at the end. Only one of these has the 20 just added on at the end, right? This is multiplying the 20 in. This is adding the 20 to the number of days, which doesn't make sense. Uh, and this one just has the, the two backwards, if you didn't pay attention. I actually wrote 20 for both of them, so I was kind of paying attention. All right, pause the video and do number 48. So number 48 is saying you started with 48. He gave away eight cards to each of his four friends. So he gave away eight times four to find the total cards, right? So he started with 48 and then gave away eight cards four times. So that would match D, right? Now, I know for our tests, let's go in and I like to debunk the ones that don't make sense. Right when you see 48 minus eight, that's taking the total cards and it's only minusing eight one time. Well, he gave away eight cards four times and then it multiplies it by four. That's going to give you that's going to give you, if you did this out, it would be 40 times four, which would equal 160. Would he have 160 cards left? Not even close, right? And let's see, number 48, uh, or B is, would give you 40 divided by four. That would mean he would have 10 cards left. That was not that far off, but you have to know you're not dividing the cards among friends because he already gave them out. And then this one with the adding, that doesn't make any sense. All right, pause, try to get your answer for number 49. So number 49 seems complicated because they're giving you all this jazz, they're giving you all this here, but it really just comes down to area equals length times width. Well, if it's a square, all the sides are the same. So you are basically just doing four and a half times four and a half. And if we convert that, Four, uh, two times four is eight, plus the one is nine halves times nine halves. And then if we multiply, you get 81 fourths. Now that is not one of our choices here. So we got to divide the four into the 81. So we get a whole number four into the 81 gives us two. Eight minus eight is zero, drop down the one. This four goes into the one zero times. Uh, so zero times four is zero. Now you can stop right there because your answer is 20. 20 with one left over and your denominator stays the same. Now, basically, once you do this and start to see for your test prep, when you see Right when you see that you got a 20 up here, I mean, none of these other choices have a 20 in it. So you know you're close enough. So even if you mess up this part, when I say make your best guess, I think sometimes you get confused when we say make your best guess. Well, 
if you know that you did this part right and you know that you got to get this four to go into the 80, right when you see this four go into the 80, you know the answer's got to be 20 something. And when none of the choices are 20, even if you can't get it to work out at the end, your best guess would be to pick the one with the 20 in it, right? All right, number 50, pause the video and go ahead and solve it. Okay, so Brian was reading a book. It has 220 pages. He reads 90 of them in the first day. So 90 of them get taken away. He wants to finish the book in five days. Which count how many pages he needs to finish the book? So the first day, he wants to finish it in five days. So we have to now divide by the five, right? But we've got to do this first, right? He wants to finish it in five more days after this first day. Or after in the first week, he read the 90 pages. So he wants to finish it in five more days. So you've got to take the total away from the uh, pages he read in the first week and then divide it. Now, if you don't put it in parentheses, uh, you got to do our order of operations, which means you would divide first. And that wouldn't get you, like if you left it like this, no, that one's not even good. But see this, you're taking the whole amount of pages we started with and dividing it by five days and then minus to the pages. You can't do that, right? Because you got to divide the five days into the pages left. This one is, now this one, they don't put the parentheses in here. So to do this one, you would have to do this first and that's going to mess you up. So don't forget, here's your answer. You got to put those parentheses in there because that'll tell you what you're doing first, right? And then this one, I don't know why you would divide the 90 pages he read by five, the five days. That doesn't make sense, right? All right, do number 52. You've got to use your In the front part of your booklet, they're going to give you a formula sheet. And it's going to tell you that uh, we want to know feet into yards. There are three feet in one yard. They will tell you that in the front booklet of the test. So now if you take the, th the um, now you guys got me all confused. Hold on. And then draw a blank here. If you take the uh, three feet, yeah, that was right. If you take the three feet and divide it into the 160 yards, see, even when I'm explaining this, see how sometimes I get flipped? I'm so worried about you guys using this formula sheet. So the three would go into there five times. That would be 15. It would leave you 10 left over. That would give you 53 with nine. So your answer would be 53 with one left over and third. You've got to use the formula sheet. They give, basically give you the answer. Once they tell you that, you're just, but you would never know to divide by three unless you know this formula and they give it to you. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's just do number 53 together because you don't really have this in front of you. It'd be kind of hard. So Harris saved $3 per week with Jamie saved six. So we want to complete the chart. So in the first week, Harris saved three, Jamie saved six. Now it's three every other week. So that would be plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12, plus three is 15, plus three is 18. Jamie did six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. Now the ultimate question they're asking you is, what is the relationship between basically these numbers? Well, isn't it times two, times two, times two, times two, times two, and times two? So don't overthink this. When they ask you on the test, what is the relationship between their savings? They just want you to know how it's basically, there's going to, when they give you this question, there's going to be a pattern. They just want you to find the pattern and say what it is. And on your test, there'll probably be multiple choice, but you've got to know just to set up these charts this way. It's always going to be easy. They're just going to ask you to find the patterns, okay? All right, we'll do number 54 together too since you guys don't have it in front of you. It just wants you to plot on the lines. I mean, we do this in, we do this in second grade. So uh, we got two one-fourths. One, two. We got one half. We got a five-eighths. We got another one-half. 
We got three eights. We got another five eights. We got another one fourth. We got a seven eighths. And we got a three fourths. Uh, and now it's basically asking you down here, what is the difference between the largest and the smallest? Well, the largest is seven eighths. The smallest is one fourth. It wants the difference, which means you subtract. So you find a common denominator down here that turns this into the common denominator would be eight, right? So eight here goes into there twice times that is uh, two. So seven minus two is five and your denominator stays the same. The difference is five eighths of an inch. Okay, jot that one down. All right, pause and do number 55. So number 55 is just asking you to write an equation for H. Well, basically 32 hours equals $448, right? So uh, 32 H's equals $448, right? That's all it's asking you for. When it wants you to use H to represent, it's 32 times the amount of hours 32 and the hours equals 48. So now it says down here, solve the equation for how much time, uh, how much Tom earns per hour. Well, you take, if you know 32, you get 448. You just basically have to take your 32 and divide it into the 48 to see what they get for each H by itself, right? So you would go in one time, 32, give you 12, drop down your eight, and that would be four, eight, 12, and zero. So they make about $14 an hour. All right, do number 56. So number 56 is just saying, how many miles less did Mitch run on Tuesday? Well, we've got 2.6, 2.6 on Monday and 1.8 on Tuesday. So, I mean, you literally can just count up to get to 2.6, which is 0.9, and then you would be at 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the answer would be 0.8, right? I mean, you could do 2.6 minus 1.8, uh, and you're going to get 0.8. Uh, when they say use this chart, basically, if they give you the chart, if you want to do math, watch how easy this is. Each one of these is one, right? So if I color in all this, that's one, two, three, four, five. Whoops, I mean, that's two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is one and one and 0.6. That equals this 2.6, right? Now you're gonna take away 1.8, well, Here's take away all of that is one, and now take away one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So whatever's left would be my answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks like an eight, that's a five. So if you wanna use the picture and not do the math, or you can just use your head and count up, or you can use an equation, whatever it takes to get the right answer for this, right? All right, let's keep going. Number 57, uh, this is volume. This is kind of an easier review for you guys today. This is not as hard as what we've been doing, right? Volume equals length times height times width. Length, one, two, three, four, five. Height, one, two, three. Width, one, two, three, four. And remember, it doesn't even matter if you go out of order on the sides. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Five and four is 20. 20 times three is 60. All done. Number 58, pause it and try to get your coordinates. So you have to know what certain words mean here, right? Closest to the origin, the origin is always zero. So this one is closest to the origin. So this one would be at two and four. Now remember, the X comes first, so it would be two, four. All right, two more. Pause and do number 59. So number 59 is just a simple equation. Um, 
I honestly can't believe this is fifth grade. I feel like we've been doing stuff way harder. If this is what the FSA test is like, you guys won't miss any questions. I feel like the last couple practices we've done have been so hard. I've even been, been confused. Uh, so I just want you to complete the equation, the $3 for small rolls and you buy four of them, three, four. Five dollars for the large rolls, and you buy seven. And then it says simplify the expression. So that means just figure it out. Twelve plus thirty-five, and that would give you what? Forty-seven dollars. And the last one: there are twenty students at Carey's Elementary School. Of those students, two fifth are fifth grade students. How many fifth grade students are there? Write your answer below. You have to know when you see this fraction and you want to get a piece of the whole, you got to multiply. So you're basically taking 200, make it a fraction, multiply it by two fifths equals 400 over five. Divide this five into the 400. Five goes into four zero times, five goes into 40 uh, eight times. And then you have this last zero, it goes into that zero, zero times and 80 is your answer. Um, for those of you that watched the whole video and got all these answers down on paper, I want you to go to Canvas. It's going to ask you to type in the secret password. And the secret password is, I am the best. So for the essay question, type in, I am the best. The people that do not know, don't watch the video, won't know this. So go in, to where it says, type in the secret code and type in, I am the best, and you will get all the points. All right. Thanks, guys. We will talk to you later.